Hey, curious minds. Today, let's dive into a fascinating question. Does the name Jesus hold any power? You might be surprised to learn that the validity of this name has only recently come into question. Thanks to the internet and social media, more people are digging into history and uncovering some pretty astonishing facts. Did you know the name Jesus is only about 500 years old? The letter J didn't even exist until the 16th century. In fact, if you look at the 1611 King James Bible, you'll see there are no J's at all. So, what did Christians call Jesus before 1550? They called him Yahusha, which is a direct transliteration of his Hebrew name. Here's where it gets intriguing. Acts 4-12 to says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So does this mean the power of salvation is in the name Jesus or Yahusha? Names are powerful symbols, and they carry a lot of meaning, but ultimately, it's the person behind the name who holds the true power. Whether you call him Jesus or Yahusha, it may be the faith and belief in who he is and what he stands for that truly matters. So that being said, let's take a closer look at the subject at hand. The name Jesus may be relatively new, but is it validated by faith in that name? Keep questioning, keep learning, and stay curious. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time. Welcome, family, to another edition of Strange and Thinking Media. This is Yeshayahu where we address the problems of a modern world. So stay tuned. We have an awesome show for you today. And we're going to talk about the name. The name of Jesus. The true name of Jesus, Yahusha Explained. How to study the Bible. Topics covered. The name lost in translation. The Hebrew roots of Yahusha. The displacement of the divine name critical distinction, the power of a name in prayer, and then our grand finale. Welcome to our channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. But most of all, enjoy the show. Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word, Lord, is Yahweh. So, you know, I'm, I'm making this video. It's just to clarify some things. I'm not here to trigger Christians. You know, I grew up as a Catholic. And then I started attending Baptist churches. And, you know, I, I've been there, done that. And it's like... I'm not here to critique anyone or to uh, bring anyone down or to hurt anyone's feelings. But because of the technology that's available now, research is, is, is simple. You don't have to run to the Library of Congress to find something. You just get on the Internet and you can pull up just about anything your heart desires. You know, and then if you do the, do the research properly, you can come up with some really good conclusions. And one of the conclusions, and it's all over the internet. I mean, it's it's like a big thing now. I mean, it's it's the genie's out of the bottle. You're not putting it back. Um, the fact of the matter is that the name Jesus is not the name of the Messiah. If he walked down the street and you said, hey, Jesus, he probably wouldn't turn around. If you said, hey, Yahusha, he'd turn around and look at you. Because that's his name. That's his Hebrew name. Christians tend to forget that he was a Hebrew of the tribe of what we call today Judah, but it's really Yahuda. And he spoke Hebrew. I know there's that rumor going around. No, he didn't speak Hebrew. I mean, there's a book in the Bible called Hebrews, and Paul was definitely speaking Hebrew to the crowd. 
Yes, they, they understood Greek. That was like uh, the English of its day. Everybody spoke Greek, but in your own little town, in your own little area, you still spoke your dialect, and they spoke Hebrew. But they probably, Aramaic is very similar to Hebrew. So, And all these languages ultimately come from what they call uh, Phoenician. But Phoenician is really just Paleolithic Hebrew. You know, if you read the book of Jubilees, it'll tell you. That's the language of creation. That's the language the Most High spoke to Adam and Eve in. So there are these things that, you know, we, we take for granted we don't think about. So I'm not here to bash anyone. But if you have ears to hear, hear. And sometimes, you know, the Most High will put a block on your eyes and a block on your ears. He complained about Israel all the time. They're, 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 they, they cannot see and their they're hearing is waxed gross and they cannot hear. And, and that's a spiritual thing. If it's not your time to know, it's not your time to know. But what you can't say is that this isn't a fact. It's, it's a reality. The name Jesus is only about 500 years old. So the question is, what did you call him before that? It's not, it's not a question of if the name Jesus has existed more than 500 years. That's a given. It has not. So what did people call him before that? Well, in Europe, they were probably calling him Isus because that would be the Greek term, right? The trans, they try to use Greek letters to get phonetic sounds that they're trying to match letters with letters. Okay, there's a Greek letter that has this sound. There's a, a Hebrew letter that has this sound. It must be this letter. And you put it together. That's called a transliteration, right? So, and if you really look at the, even if you look at the name Jesus or what it was previous to that, Isus, it's not really a transliteration. But he had a Hebrew name, and it was Yahusha. And I know that because of the Hebrew language. Yahuwah Shah. He has the same name as the father. And the father's name is Yahuwah. Yahuwah Shah and Yahuwah. Right? And it simply means, I mean, in, in his best essence, the eternal one. The eternal. The ever living. So when Moses goes up to Mount Sinai, he says, hey, the people are going to ask me, what is the name of the Most High? What is the name of our Mighty One? What is the name of our Alayim? And, and, and the Most High says, Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya. Remember the term Yah. No matter what you say, what you do, that's the term that has the, that's most important, Yah. Right? Because it denotes eternality. And he says that because he's not the only Alayim. Angels are Alayim. Right? Even demons are considered Alayim. Basically, spirit beings are called Alayim. And the uh, uh, angels were called living creatures. Creature denotes created. So angels are created Alayim. Right? But the Most High says, I am Yahweh Alayim, meaning the eternal Alayim, the ever living Alayim. I can't, I have no beginning, I have no end of days. I have no mother, no father, nothing. This, I have always been. And I will always be. So he is the eternal Alayim, right? But that name is also placed on his son. Remember, he's Yahuwah Shah. Remember, Yahuwah means ever living, eternal. The I am, or he is. That's what Yahuwah really is saying. He is, right? So up on the mountain, he says, Ahaya Asha Ahaya. I am that I am. Moses comes down the mountain. The people say, what's the name of our mighty one? He says, he is Yahuwah, right? And then you can get into the, uh, you know, I heard one person say, and she seemed very, she's a Christian girl. She, uh, um, she, she seemed a little stressed out. And what that means is I know I've been there. I know. It's, I'm not telling you anything that I haven't gone through. I'm not saying it was easy for me. In fact, it was a process. Once I understood what the name actually was, 
you know, I continued to pray, to pray in the name of Jesus because that's what I've been taught all my life. But once it was like solidified in my mind, well, that's not his name. His name is Yah- Yahusha, right? And then some people say uh, Yahusha. Uh, some people say uh, Yahshua. And I have no problem with that, right? Because the key term, because when he tells you his name, he's telling you what makes him different. I am the ever living, the eternal. And that's what Yah means. So when he says, Ahaya, Asher Ahaya, I am that I am, he's telling Moses, I just exist. So if you use the term Yah, you're on point. You know, if, if I go to Boston and I say, Park the car. If I go to L.A., I say park the car. We all know what's being said, right? It's just idiomatic, you know, expression, your accent. You know, so some people say Yahweh. Some people say Yahweh. Some people say Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? Some people say Yahweh, right? Some people say Yahuwah. But it's the best pronunciation would be Yahweh, right? So I've got no problems with anybody saying it that way. It's the key is Yah. And you know that because he said, my people will be called by my name. Well, what, what does he mean? Well, let's think about it. Zechariah, Zephaniah, Obadiah, right? Yeshayahu, right? That's Isaiah, right? Matthiah. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Do you follow my point? So this is not something to get triggered over. It's the truth. And and the truth shall set you free, right? If you believe that, right? So we need to stop with the over emotion stuff. Stop with that. This is the name. His actual name. Now you have decisions to make, right? And I had a decision to make. And even though I knew, I, I kept saying Jesus because it's in you. It's just there. You know what I'm saying? It, and it's in my brain. I see a picture in my brain. I, I actually have to fight against that picture, but it's so ingrained in Western culture. They've bombarded you with that since you were a little kid, that image, that name. That is hard. You actually have to, you have to practice You have to practice, right? So anyway, there just came a moment where, you know, it reached that tipping point. You know, you can fill up a glass of water and the water will actually, due to surface tension, rise above the, the height of the cup without spilling. But once that surface tension is broken, it spills over and it just keeps coming over, right? That's the tipping point. So I reached that point. And I just started saying Yah, Yahusha, Yahweh and Yahusha, right? So anyway, this video is meant to instruct, not to offend. And then you, you make you make your choice because I know they 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 the sick have been healed in the name of Jesus, right? The, I know that the that the demons have been cast out in the name of Jesus. So that tells me something. But there's a more powerful name. And he says, my people will know my name. He tells you that. So if you want to know who Israel is, start looking at the people who have, who have absorbed that Yah. They, it's, like, it's like a gift to them. They love it. They, they embrace it. And then you start realizing who Israel is. Israel loves Yah. They were asleep. But in the last days, they're being woken up. And that's something to also think about. The name, these, this name has disappeared from history since the Babylonian captivity. Yahweh has been gone since the Babylonian captivity. That's what, 2,000 plus years ago, right? And all of a sudden, it pops back up just now. I say just now, relatively speaking, you know, and it's big now. It's 
all over the world now. It's 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 on fire, you know. Why? Why all of a sudden now, after all these thousands of years, all these millennia, now that name has popped back out and is back in full effect and growing. People are now starting to call on his name again. That's important and that's no joke. And you should take that seriously. You should take it very seriously. Um, here's one last tidbit, right? You know, I, I see people, want that, that young lady on that video, she said, you know, those people calling on the name of Yah, they don't even know his name. They're all confused. Some people saying Yah, Yahweh. Some people saying Yahweh. Some people, well, like I said, the term Yah is key. And you know that because even, even Christians all your life, you, you guys don't even, re that's the crazy part. You don't even realize you're saying it. How do you say praise in Hebrew? Hallel, right? Hallel, right? So when you say Hallel, you're saying praise. Do you say Hallel, yay? No. Do you say Hallel, J? No. Do you say Hallel, J? No. Do you, do you, sell, do you say Hallel, God, hello, Jesus. No, what do you say? You say hallelujah, right? It's embedded in the name, and you don't even realize you're praising Yah when you say that. So you have no problem saying hallelujah, right? And even those who recognize, who recognize that the name God is not the name of the Most High, right? They'll say Jehovah. Well, where's the J? Isn't it? What did they say before Jehovah? There was there is no J in Hebrew. We forget these script, scriptures are Hebrew scriptures. These are Hebrew scriptures written by Hebrews to Hebrews and actually for Hebrews, right? But in in Abraham's seed are are the nations. Will the nations be blessed, right? And so now you, the, the Gentiles can call on that name and be grafted into Yasharel, right? And I know that's a, that, that's a hard point with some people, but it says what it says. Yah, Yah created Adam, and we're all children of Adam. He chose a nation of people, a descendancy, a bloodline, to, to keep the truth alive because the others, the Gentiles, went off, went astray. They, they, you know, they invented the pagan systems, right? Or at least they push the pagan systems. Um, it all starts in Babylon, of course, and you can blame Nimrod, who is an actual descendant of Ham. But the 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 the, the people of uh, of the the Japhethites, the you know the children of Japheth, they were called Gentiles, and they were first to go astray. So in the scriptures, in Genesis chapter 10, it talks about the sons of Japheth, the Gentiles. He does not call the children of Ham Gentiles, and he does not call the children of Shem Gentiles. He only calls the children of Japheth Gentiles. That tells me they went off track first. And you can say what you want about Ham, you know, Egypt, Cush, and all that. But it was something about them that still was spiritual. They still had a concept. They still understood there was a higher power. Japheth, I believe, just went all secular. And that's my take on it. But anyway, I talked long enough. This, this is uh, good stuff. Uh, if you want to research the name, you can research the name. But remember the term, hallelujah. You want to know what the name of the creator is? Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Okay? And I'm gonna say, that's all I'm going to say on that subject. But let's keep moving on. Um, I got a uh, video I kind of want to show you. It's it it talks it it tells a good story here. So just keep with it. The name Jesus is universally recognized as the name of the Christian Savior. However, few realize that Jesus is not the original name. The letter J did not even exist in ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. This fact alone hints at a fascinating linguistic journey that the name underwent over centuries. 
The name Jesus we use today is a product of multiple translations and linguistic shifts. The original name, as we will soon discover, was rooted in the Hebrew language and carried profound theological significance. Understanding this historical evolution is not merely an academic exercise, but a journey into the heart of the Christian faith. By uncovering the true name of Jesus, we gain a deeper appreciation for his identity and mission. This exploration will shed light on the historical and linguistic factors that led to the name Jesus and why understanding the original name is relevant for contemporary believers. To uncover the original name of Jesus, we must turn to the Hebrew language and the historical context of his birth. Jesus was born into a Jewish family in first century Palestine. His name would have been a Hebrew name, deeply rooted in the Hebrew tradition. The original Hebrew name for Jesus is Yahusha, a name rich in meaning and deeply connected to the God of Israel. Yahusha is a shortened form of the name Yahuasha, which means Yahuwah is salvation. This name points directly to the central message of the Christian faith, that God brings salvation through Jesus. The name Yahuwah, an anglicized pronunciation of the Tetragrammaton, Y-H-H-W-H, holds immense significance in Judaism. It represents the personal name of God, revealed to Moses at the burning bush. However, due to Hebrew tradition of not uttering the sacred name, substitutes like Adonai, Lord, and Elohim, God, became common in scripture readings. This practice significantly impacted later translations of the Bible. When the Hebrew scriptures were translated into Greek, the Septuagint, the Tetragrammaton was often replaced with Kyrios, Lord. This substitution continued into the Latin Vulgate, where Dominus, Lord, was used. These choices have had a lasting impact on how we understand and relate to God in prayer and worship. Section 4. Translation versus Transliteration. A Critical Distinction. To understand how Yahusha became Jesus, we must differentiate between translation and transliteration. Translation involves conveying the meaning of a word or phrase in another language. Transliteration, on the other hand, focuses on replicating the sound of a word using a different alphabet. When the Bible was translated from Greek into Latin and later into English and other languages, the name Yahusha underwent a process of transliteration, not direct translation. The Greek form of the name Jesus became Jesus in Latin, eventually evolving into Jesus in English. This process, while attempting to preserve the pronunciation, inevitably resulted in a shift away from the original Hebrew name and its inherent meaning. Section 5 The Power of a Name in Prayer The use of Jesus in prayer and worship is deeply ingrained in Christian tradition. However, understanding the name Yahusha and its significance can enrich our spiritual lives. Some believers find that using the name Yahusha in prayer deepens their connection to the Hebrew roots of their faith and brings them closer to the heart of God. The act of intentionally using Yahusha can be an act of reverence, recognizing the power and authority embedded in the name. It can also be a reminder of the salvation that Jesus, whose Hebrew name is Yahusha, offers to all who believe. Regardless of which name one chooses to use, the most important aspect of prayer is the sincerity of the heart and the authenticity of the relationship with God. Romans 10.13 reassures us that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This promise transcends linguistic differences, emphasizing the importance of faith 
in God's saving grace. Now that you know the true name, you may have a decision to make. Yes, indeed. A lot of us have decisions to make. Um, again, uh, going back to what I was talking about earlier, uh, so we talked about Yah, when we say hallelujah, means praise Yah, right? We understand that. We got no problems with it. We, we think we're praising God. No, you're praising Yah. It's embedded in the name. <clears throat> it literally means praise Yah. So understand that. He has a name. He tells you that name 7,000 times in the scriptures. You have to ask yourself honestly without getting triggered. If he's going to tell you his name 7,000 times, exactly why wouldn't you use that name? You have to ask yourself that question. And if you're honest with yourself, if you're truthful with yourself, you know, there is no argument against it, literally. You can't. Now, like I said, I was watching that video, and the young ladies, it wasn't so much her, but in her uh, threads, somebody said, um, yeah, those people are just uh, legalists. Well, how is me calling you by your correct name being a legalist? Really? Really? And I'm, I'm going to do a video on that because, you know, I heard this one uh, uh, preacher He's a, he's he's a his his ministry is through music. He's very famous. I won't say his name, but he said he was pissed off because he heard people people keep bringing up the Bible. <laughs> I was like, dude, really? I mean, even Christians and and you know, Christians, you know, they they, they understand they're under grace, but they tend to utilize it an awful lot. You know, I'm, I'm saying to you that the commandments are not done away with. If the commandments were done away with, you would not need grace. So the commandments are in full effect. That's why you need grace. Not one jot or tittle shall pass away from the law till heaven and earth pass away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we need to stop that. If you get to the end of Revelations, the last book in the Bible, like the last verse, he rattles off a list of sins. And basically, he's rattling, kind of rattling off the Ten Commandments. I'm like, yeah. And it's funny that they placed it in that location at the very end. The very end. So you can't go back and say something else superseded it. Because he put it at the end. that Adulterers shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Murderers shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. What part of that says the law is done away with? Come on. So what, what I see Christians doing a lot of time is if anyone corrects them, Oh, you're being legalistic. You're being pharisaical. No. I'm searching out the truth because the truth will set you free, right? So even Christians were getting on that guy's case. Like, dude, that's the de very definition of being a Christian. Uh, we got to preach the gospel. And here's this minister. He's very famous. And I already, I already, as as I'm listening to him talk, the spirit that's emanating from him is telling me that Satan has a hold on him because he's rich and powerful, he's famous, and 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 you know what did uh, Satan offer Messiah? He said, "I will give you all the kingdoms of the world if you will just bow down and worship me." That's a tough thing to pass up, and most flesh cannot pass that up. In fact. Because Yahusha was who he was, he was able to pass that up, right? But your average Joe, is, he's having a tough time. And I, I can see this young man is having a tough time. He's, he's doing things. He's, he's collaborating with people who are very secular, who are very wicked. Talking about he's trying to save them. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so... And then he's, and then he had the nerve to say, but "That's why people are, are the church is shrinking because you won't uh, you basically meet people where they're at. You're judgmental. You're da 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 da. Well, if the salt is lost, its saltiness. What good is it? It's good for nothing but to be cast out. Look, it, the prophecy already said, in the last days there shall come a falling away." in the church 
and at large. So don't be shocked when the church is shrinking. Understand that judgment is coming. Tribulation is coming. So you can't drop, you know, if I put salt, if I'm using salt as a preservative, right? Or even just for flavor. If the salt has lost its favor, flavor and I dump a, a bottle, I keep dumping salt on it, it don't taste any different. Why am, why am I spending money on it? Why am I wasting my time? Put it, it's not changing the flavor. Let alone preserving it, it's lost that ability too. So when, when people who call themselves believers lower their standards to meet the world just so the numbers can swell, that's insane. So I, you know, I saw him saying that, and I just looked at him like, dude, it, it's obvious. Even to the babes in Christ, it's to the, even to the babes in Christ that you got issues, dude. You got issues, and we know, we know what the issues are, right? So I, I didn't make this video to talk about Mr. <laughs> you know, his initials are KF, but you know, <laughs> anyways, I, that just bothered me when he said that. And so, and I'm going to do a video on it. Um, the Satans have, they're, they're not stupid. They know right now legalism is not going to work. See, they caught everybody off guard last time, but now everybody's up on that. I'm like, oh, so you're saying I, I can't get up and turn on a light switch on the Sabbath? Yeah, that's some legalistic, that's you adding to the law. The law doesn't say that. You know, people add these little things, you know, taste not, touch not. You know, you got to wash your hands before you do this. You got to wash your, uh, I'm just saying, the Messiah brought all that stuff up, and these were things that they added to the law. Well, Satan's are smart. What are they going to do? They're going to flip it 180 degrees. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to do that video. So you're going to find out grace the problem today is grace being turned into license, not legalism. That was the old school. The new school is let's pervert grace. You know, he, with, the, with, the, with the Jews, they perverted law, right? Basically, they took the law and said, oh, you're not, that's not good enough. You got to add this to it. You got to add that to it until it got insane. Now it's 180 degrees out. It's insane the other way. Grace, there's grace, there's grace. Yeah, so you got six, your baby mama got six babies by eight different guys. Now to do the math, that doesn't work out, but I thought it was cute. Anyway, do the math. And you're saying that person who's doing that thing, we can't correct them? And you see people say, you can't judge me, you can't judge, what? Know ye not that ye shall judge angels? Come on, people. Who said you can't judge? You just got to understand with what measure you meet, it'll be met back to you. So you better have your house in order. You pull out the, before you take the cinder out your brother's eye, you take the log out your eye, right? But it's, but notice it says, it says, yeah, take the cinder out your brother's eye. It didn't say not to. So don't, don't walk around tell, telling people you can't judge me. Yes, I can. I get judged every day, every single day. We all do. So if you're doing some dirt that you're not supposed to be doing and someone, I mean, someone catches you, I mean, and they call you on it, your reaction shouldn't be, you can't judge me. What your act reaction should be, yeah, I, I wasn't feeling right about that. And now that you say that, I'm going to try. I'm going to try really hard to break that, break that chain, you know, whatever it is. You know, so I, I get it. We all fall short, but. You know, when, when people come down on me about certain things, you know, people say, I, you know, you, you need to change this. Well, you might be surprised. I might be well aware that I need to change that thing. And like everybody else, it might not, might not be that easy. You know, these hap old habits die hard, right? So we all go through that. And yes, there's grace. But here's what the Holy Spirit will not tell you. To, it will, won't come out your mouth if you have the Holy Spirit. The law is done away with. That's not the Holy Spirit. You got another spirit if you're saying that. And I mean that. 
The minute you say that, I already know. I already know. If you say that, that tells me all I need to know. The law is not done away with. I had not known sin except by the law. You follow? If there's no law, then there's no sin. And, then, and Yahusha died in vain. Because <laughs> you know, My point is, you can't say it's okay to commit adultery, steal, lie, murder. And there's Ten Commandments, not nine. And you can't replace the Sabbath day with some made-up day that some guy in a big giant fish hat told you, nope, we're changing the day. Because that's what happened. You know, somebody came in and said, I'm in place of Christ, and I say we're going to do this. Well, why would he do that? Because it's an ancient Babylonian pagan worship of the Sunday, right? That's why they did it. All you got to do is do a little, little. Get, you got the internet now. It's, it's so simple now. And that's why things are changing. Yah saw this coming. He knew what was coming. He says, at this point in time, man is going to be on the precipice. He's going to start inventing this AI stuff. He's going to start inventing chips and vaccine, uh, you know, stuff, just stuff. He's going to start inventing stuff. He's going to get really smart. You know what I'm saying? But that's a sign that we're, we're in the end times, right? We're in the end times. So all sorts of things are going to happen. So anyway, I didn't mean to make this a long video, so I'm going to start uh, walking through it. So fairly recently, the validity of the name Jesus has come into question. Does that name have any power? It is fairly amazing that this question has not been truly explored through the centuries until now. I mean, think about it. Why now? The reason it has been thrust into the spotlight is fairly simple. With the advent of the Internet and social media, more people have access to information. And it doesn't take much research to realize that the name Jesus is only about 500 years old. Since the letter J wasn't, wasn't invented until about 1550 CE, or AD, if you're old school like me, and was not in wide use until about 1650 CE, right? So, you know, something to think about. It's, it's not just that, you know, either you, want, either you love the truth, you have love of the truth, or you don't. I love the truth. I know the truth is sometimes painful, but I'd rather hear the truth than not. In fact, if you read the 1611 King James Bible, that's the original issue, you will not see the letter J anywhere in that. So what did Christians call him before 1550 CE? Most importantly, does the name Jesus actually have power? After all, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I don't know about you, but I don't want to take a chance. If his name was actually Yahusha, I think I'd feel safe for saying that name. That's just me. You know what? It's just me. So we'll continue on here. All right. Since the letter J was not invented until the year 1550 CE, does that invalidate the name Jesus? Well, if you do a little research into the Hebrew language, you see that his Hebrew name would be Yahusha. This name is a compound word. Yahweh and Shah, meaning Yahweh saves or Yahweh delivers. The name Yahweh, written almost 7,000 times in the Bible itself, had faded into obscurity over the last few millennia and had been replaced with placeholders such as Lord and God. After multiple translations, it wasn't just directly translated from Hebrew into English. There were stopping, there were waypoints along the way, right? This obscured the name of Christ since the word Yahweh is part of his Hebrew name. So once they stop saying Yahweh, well, guess what happened to Messiah's name, Yahweh Shah? That kind of, you know, that kind of got twisted. So, you know, we, we keep coming up with excuses, but the question is, I guess, really, and, and I know how everybody feels, you know, people have been saying the name Jesus for a long time. Some people believe that the name Jesus 
is the English translation of the Hebrew name. This couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, rule number one of translating is you never translate a name, ever. Who's the, who's the uh, leader of China? It's Xi Jinping. If Xi Jinping came to America to speak to the president, would the president call him Chuck? <laughs> you know, I've actually seen that happen. We couldn't pronounce the guy's name, so we made up a name. We started calling him George because we just couldn't pronounce his name. But we knew his name. His name doesn't change. You keep your name. That's what identifies you. Your name is your I ID. So your name wouldn't change. Xi Jinping's name doesn't change because he's he's coming here speaking with Americans speaking, you know, whatever. Uh, Vladimir Putin's name doesn't change to Alfred uh, Peters because he comes here. You know what I'm saying? It's insane. Nobody does that. No translator would ever do that. So you can't ever say Jesus is, a, is the English translation of the name Yahusha. It's not true. So... It isn't even a, tra a true transliteration, meaning where you try to make it sound the same. Use your letters to try to make it sound like the way it sounds in Hebrew. J Jesus doesn't even sound like Yahusha, does it? So, no, so Jesus literally has no meaning, and I hate to tell you that. Well, no, I, lo I love telling you the truth. Yahusha has a meaning, right? Essentially, it means the eternal one is your salvation. That's what it means. And the eternal one is the most high, the creator of heaven and earth. That's why you say hallelujah and not hallelujah, God, right? The truth is, okay, here's where we go. Here's where we're going with all this. So the question is, should we pray in the name of Jesus or in the name of Yahusha? The truth is God winks at ignorance, and if you pray in faith, you are blameless. I think we've all seen the most high answer prayers in the name of Jesus. We have. And, I mean, if you're right in your heart, I'm sure the Satan's answer prayer is in the name of Jesus too. But, but you've seen that name and its efficacy because the people speaking it were speaking it in faith, Right? But if you're watching this video, you now have a decision to make. You really do. Are you, are you, okay, here's the decision. I, I've been there. You know, I, I, made a, I had a choice and I chose. You are no longer ignorant. Remember, for whosoever shall call upon the name of, of the Lord shall be saved. Now that's not the word Lord. What is the word Lord? Let's take, take that out right now. The word Lord is a, a, a device. The word, it should be Yahweh. And in this case, Yahweh, Shah, right? So whoever calls upon the name of Yahweh, Shah, shall be saved. That's how it should read. Okay. Got it? Get it? Gone. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Do you follow my point? And I'm not here to um, piss anybody off. That is not my intent. I have been where you are. I just made a decision, an informed decision. You follow? So hope, hopefully this catches, you know, you, you get where I'm coming from. Am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? Acts 4, verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Yahusha Hamashiach. On that note, I'm going to say farewell. I love you all so much. And thank you so much for continually supporting my content. If you did enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. And share this with your friends and family. I'm sure they find it interesting as well. I'm very excited to continue this journey with you. 
I thank you all for bringing certain stories to my attention and for continually keeping me updated with certain events around the world. I very much appreciate you all. And I'd like to give a big shout out to, to the channel members. Uh, you guys keep me going. When I feel like nobody's listening, you know, sometimes it, you know, it does get to you. Like, is anybody hearing this? You know. And uh, everybody have a beautiful and blessed day. Who's in the body of Messiah? Yahusha Hamashiach. And I'll see you all on the next video. Shalom. Take care.